Hey everyone, welcome to Empower Team Monday Night Call. Um, tonight we're going to have Natalie Borges and Kylie Davila, and they are going to be dropping their best success tips, truth bombs, and they're just going to be speaking from the heart. Um, these women both have so much experience, so much wisdom. They're both super successful at this, and they are just going to be bringing the heat tonight. So get your notes ready, and we are going to let Natalie and Kylie take the stage. Hey, thanks, Nat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll start out because um, we've came up or come up with eight points, but we did want to mention these are in no way organized by importance. Right. Um, and then also these are eight tips that we came up with. These are what we're going through right now, things in our, our life that we're going through. So of course, if you look at success tips, you could come up with a thousand. So <laughs> take notes on these, but just know these aren't like, there's nothing you know super special about these that if you don't have another one, you can't move forward. So this is what we got. Uh, the first one I'm going to start out with is your mindset and really how you approach your business. And you really have to have a growth mindset. Uh, I told Natalie this morning that something caught my eye the other day. I was looking at a Brooke Hemingway video, but there was a video um, saying it was a business related one saying you want to do what the 99% are not doing. Yeah. And because of that title, I was like, I'm going to go watch that. And I did, but your mindset really plays a huge part of into your business. I found this quote that I thought was super powerful. It says, whatever we plant in our subconscious mind and nourish with repetition and emotion will one day become our reality. And how much truth that that carries, how heavy that is. Mm -hmm. um, change your mindset, change your life. I always say that it's so simple, but it's the truth. Uh, the same for if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. That's Everybody right. says that, but I mean, what do you think? Have you really thought about like when you're starting this or right now on your journey, maybe you've been in a few months, but where is your mindset? Do you actually think that you can do this? Are you in a growth mindset? Um, I was listening to a call the other day and they were talking about um, that inside of all of us, we have a poor person, a middle-class person, and a rich person, and that you just don't know it. Um, and based on what you're taught throughout your life, that's pretty much, I mean, that's probably going to be your mindset. Uh, you're taught to graduate, go to school, get a degree, and then go earn a paycheck trying to do what you just got your degree in. And so just knowing that it's okay that we're, you know, going against the 99. There's a huge gap there between that, that 1%. But um, just thinking about that person inside of you and like what you're really pursuing. And then some of the ways I adjust my mindset every day, because it's not like you just fix it. Here's my mindset. And then you move forward. This is an every single day thing that you're going to have to um, realize your mind I mean, Satan will come and attack. And so you got to guard your mind, guard, guard your thoughts, guard, guard your heart. Daily affirmations in the morning, I get up and then I might grab my phone, but I don't check messages. I don't want to go into reactive mode. I don't want to be like, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. I get in the word. I fill myself up with daily affirmations. Uh, so I encourage you guys, you know, I don't know how your morning looks, but really just try to start your morning off pouring into yourself because you can't pour into anybody else. If you're empty, you got to take care of you first so that you can pour into other people, which is also, I think something we are called to do, you know, God wants you to, you never know like who, um, who God has you, who you're going to meet that day, those divine, um, appointments and stuff like that. That's what I believe. So fill yourself up first and foremost so that you can pour into others. And then the last thing I really have on uh, mindset is comparison is the thief of joy. You never know 
where somebody is starting, um, you know, you might start exactly on the same day, sign up, but you never know if somebody has a background in leadership or maybe somebody has been in network marketing before. You just really never know someone's background. So just don't compare your journey with somebody else. If somebody just hit fast start gold and you're trying to hit silver, it's fine. Just keep your eyes forward and keep moving on. Um, so Nat, do you have anything to add to the mindset? Girl, that was good. <laughs> that was okay. good. So the second thing I have here is failing forward. Tip number two, failing forward and emotional resilience. And honestly, in January, Melissa Eichenhorst had a, a call at Leaders Retreat on failing forward, and it was so good. Um, I've never really thought about failing, how she described it, but we are taught that failing is bad. That's just in our mind. You fail a test that's bad. It's the end. It's like a final step, but it's really when you start to realize that failing is a part of success. You can't be afraid to fail. Failing is, you just need to accept it, embrace it. Uh, the same call that I, I just talked about, about um, the guy that was describing, you know, about the 99% and you being the one. Uh, he was talking about when he left his company, this guy told him, you're going to fail and you're going to come back because that's what he had done. He had went out, he had started something, he failed and he came back and he said, no, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna fail. But the difference between me and you is I'm gonna keep moving forward. And I thought that was really good because life, I mean, you're gonna fail. You can't, there's no way around it. You gotta just go through it. So just really viewing your mistakes or failures as stepping stones and just embracing them and saying, you know, hey, I just learned something new, it's how you learn. Uh, if you want to succeed, double your failure rate. That was from Tom Watson. And what I wanted to talk about on em uh, emotional resilience is don't be attached to the outcome. I know that we say that a lot, but really you cannot be, be attached to the outcome. People are going to disappoint you. People are going to disappoint you every single day, probably. So you just can't rely on that. Uh, every time I talk to somebody, I do my, my job. I'm serving, serving mindset. I ask them a lot of questions. I provide them with the information that they need. And then what they do with that information is up to them. Hopefully they'll start. I want them to start on this journey, but if not, that's okay. And just really remembering, like, don't take things personal. So if somebody tells you something, uh, you never know really what's going on um, behind their door and just realize that you just never know what's going on. So don't take things personal. Um, don't be attached to the outcome and have a servant mindset and knowing that things that happen in the past, they are experiences. Keep your eyes forward. Okay. So that's number two. Uh, yeah, I wanted to add to Kylie there. Like no one is, is in their messenger as much as we are, right? Like no one is thinking about Plexus as much as we are because we do this. So that's something that I've had to learn, you know, when, when someone is, is I'm following up with them, I'm doing my job and they're not getting back to me. And I'm just like, what? Like, that is so rude, you know? Um, but here's the thing. People aren't in their messenger like we are, you know, people aren't, you know, um, they're not thinking about plexus. They have a bunch of other priorities and life stuff. You have no idea what people go through, right? Especially now. So, you know, just having compassion for people and just really knowing that, like you said, you know, that whatever the outcome is, it does not define who you are as a person. Um, it does not define your character. It does not like whatever they choose to do, we respect that and um, we respect the outcome. So I think, I think that was, that was amazing, Kylie. Yeah. Uh, the third one, I got this actually from Natalie. She posted this the other day and it stepped on my feet a little bit. So I wanted to step on your toes too. Um, de develop resourcefulness. If you didn't watch the video, go find it. It's in pink power. Um, but it's saying that it's not that you don't have enough resources but you need to develop the characteristic of resourcefulness. So if you don't have the answer, go find it. 
Um, if you don't have, when you speak or think about resources, we're just talking about, you know, tools, your upline, your upline is there. Uh, we have an incredible team, which is really nice. I have met a lot of people that talk about like, wow, I don't have anybody. Like, can you help me? So I do want to say we do have an incredible, incredible upline, but you can't rely on them. You know, your paycheck has your name on it. This is your job. And so use them when you can, but you have to be resourceful yourself. Uh, pretty much, um, yeah. You have everything inside of you that you need um, to find a way. So sounds simple, but you got to develop resourcefulness. The last thing that I have for you guys is, sorry, I have papers here, I'm flipping through, time blocking. And I do want to just say disclaimer, I am working on this and it is so hard, but I am not going to stop until I get it down. And I watched a video the other day with, or this morning, Natalie tagged me in it and she made it seem so simple. And so it comes down to everybody has the same 24 hours. There's gonna be people that are busier than you making it happen and people that are less busy than you. Everybody has the same 24 hours. You can't manage time. It's just 24 hours. So really it's what are you doing? You have to tell your time and your money where it's gonna go or else you're gonna get to the end of the day and you're gonna say like, where did it go? So hours in the day, that's what I'm working with. I would encourage you guys to, you can find on YouTube, be resourceful, go find some videos. Um, if you wanna do hours, some people do it in chunks. Personally, I'm doing it hour by hour. I start, um, the way Christina did it, that sounded so simple is just, what do you have? Like fill up, fill up your calendar with what you already know. So if you have um, to pick kids up in the morning or get them to school, I guess you'd probably be taking them somewhere, wake them up at a certain time, pick them up, t-ball, um, meetings, stuff like that, fill in your calendar and then look at the space that you have left and go from there. And the idea is not to just fill yourself up so you're just busy, busy, busy. I was reading in John Maxwell's book, he actually says you should have about three and a half hours of blank space a day for you to reflect and stuff like that. But if you're not um, using your other hours in your day to get stuff done, then you're just gonna, at, at the end of the night, you're not gonna have peace because there's gonna be so much stuff that's left undone that when you are in your time, freedom, whatever, you're just gonna be thinking about everything else. So really just time blocking, all the successful people say that's what you got to do. So that's what I'm listening to. That's what I'm working on right now. And no one fills your calendar but you. So what are you going to fill your calendar with? You got to, some of the good things you've got to give up because it's often those good things that take the best things and we want the best, right? So, um, and the last thing, it's not restricting your time. It's actually freeing it up for you. So. That's what I got for that. So good, Kai, that was so good. Um, yeah, and time blocking is, is such a, it just gives you direction, right? Whether you are, you know, working outside of the home or working inside of the home and you have a bunch of kids in your house, it just gives you a sense of direction. Um, all right, so I'm gonna pick up on number five. And um, number five for me, I wrote down offer value by solving problems. We offer value and we solve problems. It's a gift what we get to do. We get to help people. Um, and whenever you think about it this way, I mean, there's so many quotes out there about entrepreneurship and how it's, you know, as entrepreneurs, we solve problems. We help people solve their problems, right? We give them an opportunity we give them a financial opportunity and like anything else with no glass ceiling, they can do whatever they want with it. They can go at their, you know, their own speed. Um, and we offer amazing products that really, really get down to um, the root of a lot of health issues. So we get to offer people solutions. Um, and I think it's amazing that um, we get to, we get to help people solve their problems by calling them 
to action. And this is a big one for me because when I first started my business, I was not calling people to action. I was just like, you know, let me know when you're ready. And the thing is like, honey, they're not going to let you know when they're ready. <laughs> like they will not let you know. So uh, don't message people. Let me know when you're ready or let me know when you've read this or uh, let me know when you want to try this. Uh, most likely they won't let you know. You have to ask specific questions. If you're trying to close somebody, you specifically ask them, hey girl, I'm free tonight at 8 p.m. and I would love to get you set up. Are you free tonight at 8 p.m.? So I can do that for you and help you out and get you started. And so even that right there, that's gonna help so much moving things forward with the people that you are speaking to. Um, even in, honestly, I was reading this like social media, um, social media influencer posted this thing about, you know, calling people to action, even with our posts, like even with, you know, even saying something like it was like, you know, call to action, you know, tell me how you asking questions in our post or watch my stories for, um, whatever, or like this post, if you could relate to this, um, those things are just helping us call people to action. We really need that. And we solve people's problems, right? We want to help. We want to help them solve their problems. So that's something that we have to incorporate into our IPA, into our posting. I'm going to really start trying that in my posting since I read that. Um, so that's just something that, um, you know, just remember that our words, the last words that we leave in a message are going to be the ones they remember. So if you're just saying like, let me know dot, dot, dot. I mean, they're not, they're, that's not, it's not calling them to act. Right. So we want to, want to leave things, want to leave our messages with a question that's going to get them thinking, you know, okay, am I free tonight? Could I, could I pull that off? Um, so we want to make sure we're doing that. Um, for number six, um, I put always learn new skills, always be open to learning. Um, not only is it just so important in, in life, like to just be open to learn new things, right? Like even in your parenting, if you're a parent open, like each kid is so different, right? And we have to be open to what the child, you know, this one needs. It's different than the other one, you know? <laughs> and so being open to learning new skills is, is going to be crucial for the growth of your business. Um, we speak to different people every single day. Everyone is so different. Um, and so learning people skills, learning, you know, how to close people, um, learning how to call people to action, right? Learning these things are going to help us grow our business. Um, we just, you know, we just finished the momentum movement, right? So that right there is a way that we invested into our growth um, because we believe in learning new skills. We believe that it's, it's something that's necessary if you want to grow in your business, investing in the learning. Um, I love, Natalie has been a great example of that. Um, I, since I've met her and we've done this business together, she's always been learning new things. Um, it's just important to be open to trying new things too. You know, if um, Emily Gibson says this all the time. If you've never done a live before, do a live. You know, if there's just some things that you, you're a little resistant to, then push through that. And that's how, that's how we grow. Um, for number seven, this is one that I realized recently that I hadn't been doing. And I wanted to encourage you guys when I got this, like, I was like, oh my gosh, I have not been doing this. Um, it's meeting new people. And I think that's huge for our business because like I mentioned before, we are in a people business. Um, and so if, if sometimes we're running around the same circles and we're like, oh, why don't anybody want to do this? Or why, you know, it might just be that you're not expanding your network. You want to expand your network. You want, however that is, you're going to do that. Since COVID, things have been really, you know, different with meeting people or maybe going to church or whatever it is. But more than ever, people are doing a lot of uh, Facebook group stuff and meeting new people online and that's still growing. And so there are new people that you can be meeting um, 
all mine. And it's not, doesn't have to be creepy, doesn't have to be weird. Um, and there's a bunch of, of ways we can do that, whether it's through Facebook groups, whether it's, you know, just going back into also, this is sometimes what I do. I'll go back into like people that I've known or that I think I met and I'll just shoot them a, a friend request and I'll just message them. And I'll say, man, you look really familiar. I don't know if we've personally met before, um, but I'm so happy to be connected to you. So simple, not creepy at all. I'm not creeping on anybody. I'm just letting them know you look familiar. I want to be connected to you and it does not have to be weird. So that's just a way that I, I used to do that a lot more. And I just realized, man, I have not been meeting new people recently. Um, and so I just thought that was really, really important. Like we can't stop doing that. We can't stop meeting new people. Um, okay, so it's 8.54. So let me, <laughs> um, uh, okay. Um, okay, so number eight. Number eight, I put get clarity. Get clarity. Know your why. I, I, I did a call on this a while, a little while ago, I think a, lot, a few weeks ago. Know your why. Know your goals, right? We do a goal setting call every month. Super, super important to know what you're going for this month, to know what you want to go for next month, to know what it's going to look like in about three to six months, what your goal is for that. Clarity is so important. Um, clarity of where you're at right now, where you're headed, being real with yourself, taking a hard look in the mirror, um, finding out what are some areas you could be working on. But clarity is so important, especially in this business. We can get caught up sometimes. And when we realize that we've lost focus and we're kind of going through the motions, but our heart might not be in it, just like, you know, coming back to and just realizing where am I going? Where am I headed? What is my why again? Like what, what, you know, why did, what happened with that? Why did I lose focus? Because that's going to be super important. Clarity is super important. Um, I hope that this was, um, was helpful. Um, there's, we can go on and on and on. Like there are probably a hundred other things I can add to this. <laughs> and I'm sure Kylie can add another hundred. Um, but we just really hope that this, that this would just kind of help you guys. Um, because a lot of these things are, are daily things that we're having to deal with. And we just thought, um, that we all needed, we all needed this reminder. So, um, so yeah, Kylie, did you want to add anything else as we close up? No, that was really good. <laughs> um, and your why I like, I love the last point because, and your why can always evolve and change. That's right. Making sure that you're attaching feeling to it. Yep. That's right. Sometimes you can be like, oh, well, today's fine. I don't have to do this. But just yeah. be like, if I keep doing this, what is that feeling I'm going to have? Are you going to have regret or right. you know, where is this going to put me? Right. So good. Yeah. Great job, ladies. So good. So many amazing points. I love all of that. I know all of us have, I took notes on all of that. I know all of us have like, all of our nuggets that we get to take along from this and y'all killed it. Thank you so much. Bye guys. We will see you guys all. Oh wait, we, we will see you all on the next call, but we also, um, we're going to be sharing a link to an, uh, an event that we're going to be doing on Thursday. So start thinking about the people that you want to invite to this group. We're working on finishing up all all the posts from that. So um, be on the lookout for that to get posted in comment love very soon. Y'all have a great night. Good night.